How do we know if price is going to reverse using ICT concepts? Well, most traders always talk about a fair value gap trade entry, but if we really want to take that top of the iceberg trade entry, we have to use smart money techniques, SMT, and that is what I'm going to talk about in this video. Before going into the fancy chart examples, we first have to talk about the drawing example, as that will make it a lot easier for you to understand the SMT. So a SMT occurs between two different correlated pairs. So the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 is correlated pairs, and the EU and GU is correlated pairs. And that means price is going to move the same direction. So if price fails to take out a high on one of the pairs, then it should also fail to take out the high on the other pair. But if one of the pairs take out that high and the other pair fails to take out a high, it creates a SMT. And when price creates a SMT, it leads to a reversal. And now you may ask, how can we catch that top of the iceberg in a trade entry? So basically, when price takes out that high on one of the pairs, but fails to on the other pair, we can short as soon as we see price is starting to move lower. And we could short by maybe price creating an inversion value gap. Or we could short when price take out the high, but fails to on the other pair. Then when we see price gives confirmation for lower prices, put our stop loss at the high. And then target a draw on liquidity or just a higher time frame objective. A bullish SMT looks something like this, where price on one of the pairs fails to take out the low, but on the other pair, price takes out that low. And if we were to take a trade entry, we could short when price takes out the pair or takes out the low on one of the pairs, put our stop loss at that low, and then target buy side liquidity. So that's how a bullish SMT looks like. For the first chart example, we can see we have on the left the NASDAQ and on the right the SMP 500. So we see price on NASDAQ fails to take out this swing high, but on the SMP 500 price took out that high. So what can we anticipate now? A reversal as price created a SMT. But now let's go into a lower time frame and see how we can use this SMT to our advantage. Down here on the five minute time frame, we can see that we created that SMT, which means we could anticipate a reversal. And that also means we can now start looking for that top of the iceberg trade entry. But before we just take a trade entry on the SMT, we want to look for a confirmation that price is now willing to move lower. And one confirmation could be a change in state of delivery, which we have right here, and also a mitigation block, which we have within here. And that now means we can anticipate lower prices, and a trade entry would be found within the change in state of delivery, as it can be paired with this large imbalance. So already we have around three confirmations, SMT, mitigation block, and change in state of delivery. And also a bonus is this imbalance that we have within here. Price made a retracement up to the tick on the S&P 500. And on the NASDAQ, we made a small mohawk, which means price just made a small tick through that change in state of delivery. And after that, we get a large candle to the downside, sweeping intermediate term low, which is another confirmation that price is now willing to move lower. So a trade entry could be taken at the change in state of delivery, put our stop loss at the high of the SMT, as that we can consider the smart money reversal, and then target intermediate term low. And that would only make a 0 0.8 risk reward ratio. So then this could be a target right at the 10 AM low. And over here on the NASDAQ, we could also found a trade entry at the change in state of delivery, Stop loss at the high of the SMT, 
and target the intermediate term low down here, which will make a 1.5 risk reward ratio. Or we could of course target the low that we also targeted on the S&P 500. Down here in the 50 minute time frame, we can see that price created a SMT, where on the NASDAQ price ran this low, but on the S&P 500 price failed to take out that low. And it occurred at 3 a.m. this low. Now if we zoom in, we can see that price also created a intermediate term low. As we see, we have a short term low. After that price ran that short term low, also creating that SMT. Then after that, it created another short term low on both pairs. And price creating another short term low, that is where we're going to find a trade entry on the lower time frame. So now let's hop down on the lower time frame and also anticipate this low down here not being taken out as it is both a intermediate term low and also the low of the smart money reversal on both pairs. Down here on the one minute time frame, we can now see price created a short term low on both pairs. Then after that, we saw price created another low that ran that short term low, also creating the SMT on the 15 minute time frame. Then after that, we have the second short term low which we're going to find a trade entry within. And the reason for that is because we can anticipate price creating a short term low and then moving higher as we created a SMT and also that we could anticipate an intermediate term low if price does not run this low. So now we want to look for a trade entry. And we see on both pairs that we have a fair value gap within here that then got overlapped creating an inversion value up, but then immediately got disrespected. And over here, on the S&P 500, we can again see price creating this inversion fair value gap, then gets gapped below, then price trades higher, and then on both pairs, we can see we have a working inversion fair value gap within here. And we also see that we created this kind of V-shape which often leads to a balanced price range on the lower time frame, and a balanced price range leads to higher prices. And we can see that on both pairs. So here we could actually anticipate this inversion fair value gap to work. And we see on both pairs, price make a retracement, not taking out the intermediate term high or internal range liquidity, I mean, and then even goes higher. Now, if we were to take a trade entry based on price making a retracement down into that inversion fair value gap, we could enter at the high on both pairs, put our stop loss on the low. And the reason we want to put our stop loss at the low is because we could anticipate price not going down into this short term low. And that means this inversion fair value gap should work. As if price takes out this short term low, then we could anticipate the intermediate term low to be potentially invalid. And then we're going to target buy side liquidity, which we have up here on both pairs. And we see that price on the S&P 500 take out that high, but fails to on the NASDAQ. Then price makes a retracement. After that, we see down into this inversion value gap, then price moves higher, creating another SMT on this high, then moves lower again, and then creates another SMT. As we see within here. And then lastly, takes off, taking out that buy side liquidity as we see.